A Gold Coast housing shortfall. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your shine of coffee because this is an urgent call for action on a Gold Coast housing shortfall. We have to look at this article from realestate.com.au, originally from the Gold Coast Bulletin. Now, before we go through this, there's two things I want to bring to your attention. Just, just little things that I think might be important. Now, the first one of those, well, is this article here that I discussed in a previous video. And you can see here, regions with the highest rate of depressed listings. And the Gold Coast seems to be at the top of that of 5.5%. There you go. So a lot of people are, well, struggling to pay their mortgage. So they're forced to sell. Or they're in distress and having to sell. Not quite forced yet. We're not there yet. And this article from my Gold Coast, or sorry, mygc.com.au discussing unemployment. So unemployment on the Gold Coast has fallen for the second month in a row. Fantastic. Thanks largely to a drop in the number of people looking for work. Participation on the Gold Coast is going down. People are giving up. I mean, if you're going to be unemployed surfer dude, you do on the Gold Coast, guys. Why not? The weather's nice. Go for it. Or it could just be because it's a bloody tourist city. It's a tourist city, everyone. I know. I've grown up on the Gold Coast. I lived, went to high school there. You know? There's like three roads you drive up when you do an Uber. So no wonder unemployment... Finding jobs are going to be hard. People are giving up because it, tourism, it's a tourism dependent economy. There's no real, I mean, the central business district is a bit of a joke, you know, and it's all developers and there's so much Airbnb stock down there. What's going to happen with that, eh? Hey? According to the ABS, the unemployment rate fell from a revised 7.9% in August to 7.5% in September. The 12-month average, and we don't, I don't care about that. We can see here 7.5% in September, everyone. There you go. Pretty high unemployment rate. The number of jobs on the Gold Coast actually fell by an estimated 600 last month to a total of 324,400. But there are now more women employed on the Gold Coast than men. So, there you go. The number of people officially classed as unemployed fell from 27,700 to 26,300. So people are leaving the workforce. So you've got unemployment at... 7.5% on the Gold Coast, which is higher than the Australian average, which is 6.9. You've got mortgages or people selling under distress, the highest in the country at 5.5%. But apparently, apparently there's a call for a housing shortfall. So when I saw this, I thought, yeah, we, we need to look at this one because I, I don't know anymore. How, let's see how they can try and spin this. What do you think? What do you reckon? I'm going to have a shot of coffee before we go through this one. Ah, the good old, good old Gold Coast, hey? Building the bloody tram line along, along for all the tourists when all the people live, you know, all the people live in the suburbs over here, so they build a tram line here, not connecting it to the rail line here, you know, maybe trying to create some connections across the city, but no, that's too logical. We can't have that. Let's get people to go from Pacific Fair to the Rubina Hospital for some reason. Sure. Future housing supply and affordability are in serious jeopardy on the Gold Coast, according to a peak body which has set, which says service, serviced land available is falling well below critical benchmarks. Without urgent action, the Urban Development Institute of Australia, Queensland, predicts substantial price rises, reduced home choice, and infrastructure shortfall in coming years. Are they basing that on the same growth, or are they taking account that we're entering the first recession in 28 years, or the fact that tourism and, mi tourism and migration is falling? Oh, international holiday tourists are pretty much non-existent. I used to work in Surface Paradise at Woolies there when I was in high school, and I remember, you know, tour groups of Japanese would just come in and they'd just go through and they would actually buy bags and bags of Tim Tams to take back. You know, tons of them. Tons of them to take back. And they loved this stuff. Maybe they were selling it. Do you think that's happening now? The state government mandates that every council area should have four years of approved lot supply to ensure that the target of an additional 30,000 plus dwellings are delivered in the southeast. Well, is that actually necessary anymore? We're in a recession. UDIA CEO Christy Chesser Brown said the Gold Coast has just 1.7 years of supply, the lowest in all SEQ regions, which leaves the city well short of the four-year benchmark. 
At this point in time, most South East Queensland councils don't have the level of supply and many are falling well short of the benchmark, she said. Put simply, insufficient land supply means fewer houses on the market and higher prices. The Institute is calling on local governments, state governments and key property industry players to work together on the streamlined solution. It's not a straightforward issue and we recognise there are many factors preventing land stocks from, being, from reaching the desired level to comfortably cater for demand, she said. However, all parties need to work together to make it faster and simpler to deliver land. What do you reckon, everyone? Do you think we're facing a critical housing shortage on the Gold Coast because we don't have four years' worth of land available? Well, Miss Ch uh, Chessa Brown said Queenslanders had not been prepared for the challenges that rapid population growth posed for each region. People want to live here, and they're moving here. We can't stop that. But we must react by planning and delivering the housing people want, she said. Households are diverse, and no one type, age, family structure, or life stage. So the housing options available should reflect that. Right now, all the people, younger families, and first-home buyers looking for smaller homes are locked out of many suburbs. Because the value of the suburbs are such that you wouldn't bother building a small house on it. Housing options were also restricted by planning schemes that dictate minimum lot sizes and made it difficult and unfeasible to deliver a range of housing types, she said. Well, she's right there. The findings were released this week in the perfect storm, South East Queensland Land Supply Report, which was based on extensive UDIA research into buyer housing preferences across South East Queensland. So I suspect, I suspect the research that the UDIA has done doesn't take account for recent changes of a global scale or a national scale. I just just put a bet on that. You know, what do you think? You think that could be a guess? I mean, any way to streamline that? That's one way to address housing affordability. You provide more land and you make the red tape that people have to jump through a lot easier. I remember driving past or when we were looking for a place to live, we'd often look for houses where we could split the blocks, you know, move the house over and then sell off a portion of it. But then you have to look at all the headworks charges and fees and costs that you're paying just to have another block there, which is kind of a joke because the infrastructure burden on the council is nowhere near that additional cost. So, I mean, that's the problem. The council see all of this as money making schemes and it's a bit of an issue. It would be easier to reduce the red tape can we see it happening? I don't know. You know, what do you think, everyone? Do you think the Gold Coast is facing a housing shortage and is more land the solution? Or do you not trust the UDIA's research? As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next episode.